Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Slice of Shonen. I am your host, The Cloudy Crow, and today we'll be reacting to Mushoku Tensei Season 2, Episode 17. And I am so hyped for this episode here because my guess is that it's going to focus on Norn here. I have very high hopes for Norn, and plus she's having a hard time. You know, she's coming to this school for the first time, she doesn't have a whole lot of friends, so I'm just rooting for her. And I can't wait to see where things go from here. She's also kind of slowly starting to open up to Rudy. So let's see whether we can finally uh, break the ice in this episode here. So if you guys are excited for the episode, make sure to leave a like. While you're down there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you know whenever I drop a brand new reaction. And if you head on over to the Patreon and join the $2 tier, then you'll get to see all of my uncut reactions. But with that out of the way, let's dive into this. Rudy does not look happy. Oh, he's starting to see himself in Norn. Dude, see, everybody needs someone like that. Having that friend reach out to you and make you feel included in everything else that's going on, it's invaluable. So... Rudy being this person for his sister, especially when you take into account the fact that he never really had someone like that for him. He did have someone that did try to reach out to him, but not really in this way. It makes this moment so much more significant. I didn't see her when they zoomed out. Dang. He looks like a man on a mission! Oh, is he gonna make a speech? There you go. Oh, does he think she's being picked on? I don't know, you look pretty angry. Let's see if they come clean. Oh my god! Jesus, Rudy, these are kids! Jesus. Yeah, hold up! Put the gun down, Rudy! Jesus! Okay. I think we're getting something really interesting here. But I understand why Rudy's mad. See, I kind of misinterpreted this at first. I thought that he kind of got the sense that Norn wasn't feeling or she was kind of feeling excluded. Like, she didn't really belong in the school. So I thought he was going to let her know that like she could rely on him or maybe help her make some friends because that's the vibe that i got from her it's just the fact that she's been struggling with making friends in this school but here it seems as though he was actually mad because he thought she was being picked on and that was the reason why she wasn't going to class anymore so that's why he's here with like a loaded gun in his hand saying was it you was it you <laughs> But I'm sticking with my guns. I think that it's not so much people picking on her. I think it's more so just something else. Like, whether it's her struggling to make friends or something else that's bothering her. What? What a reach! Holy! But that just shows you. How traumatized Rudy still kind of is from that. Yeah, so now he's starting to realize that he's kind of the reason, indirectly. Because from all the examples we've been given, she'd kind of start to, you know, get into her feelings whenever somebody would compare her to Rudy. And we don't know if it's because she's struggling with having to live up to Rudy 
or if it's because she doesn't want to be associated with him. Okay. Yeah, see, that's why you can't blindly agree with her. She immediately came for her throat. Yep. You gotta get to the root cause. Honestly, I don't know what I'd do in Rudy's situation. This is a tough spot to be in. Yeah, obviously he's gonna have to confront her, but I wouldn't know how to do this the right way. There we go. Okay, let's hope this idea is better than the last one. Oh no. Look out, that gorilla girl might still be on the prowl. Alright, let's see how he handles this. Oh, she sent the signal. Or he sent the signal. That's cool. Uh, is anyone gonna put that back down? That's uh, pretty suspicious. This is cool though. Rudy's got some real ones by his side, man. They came up with this whole covert operation to sneak him into the dorm. What if she was just in there doing black magic? What? Who was that? Oh, snap. Dang, it's reminding him of his past. Yeah. Even when his friend tried to come in and checked on him, he did nothing but push him away. Yo, real quick pause. This is uh, Cloudy from the future. And I just wanted to clear something up real quick. Um, here, I call him his friend. I find out later on that it's his brother. This whole time, I just thought that whenever he called him his brother, he just meant that in like a friendly term. Like, you know, me and him are bros. I thought he was using it in that sense. Because when we first saw him reaching out to Rudy back in like season one, I was left with the impression that he was a friend from school, but now I know he's his brother. So just wanted to get this out before you guys cook me in the comments. Yeah. Until he stopped coming back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Reliving this situation? A bit more understandable to see where she's coming from. Yeah. So now we're getting like a look into her thoughts on this whole situation. Wow. Jesus. So that's why she wanted the dorm. She was afraid she'd get thrown out here. Okay. 
Ah, man. She doubted herself. Now everybody... Like, oh, Grey Rat? Like, Rudy Grey Rat? Yep. Wow! Holy crap! This is a huge revelation for me. Because like I said, from the beginning, I thought that she was struggling to make friends here. But there's definitely like a ton of people that I think would have been willing to be her friend and talk to her and hang out with her. But she didn't want to hang out with them. Because all they ever would talk about was Rudy. Dang! Look, they don't even know her name! And then they cut her off? This is brutal, man. Here it is again. Oh my gosh, no! No! <laughs> this is such a bad look! Yeah, oh my gosh. So in her head, she's thinking like, man, everybody loves this guy. But only I know the real one. I know just how terrible of a person he actually is. Jeez. Oh my gosh. What even is that? I'm not sure. Would that be like a panic attack maybe? I feel like I may have, like, felt something similar to what she felt there, but I, I don't even know what I would call it. Yeah, Rujard knows. Dang, he's such a good guy, man. Approaching her. Let's see what he says. Starting to see a new side of him. Whoa! Holy! That's so cool! Mm -hmm. Oh, this is beautiful, man. My heart. Oh, man. Just gotta let it out. Sleep it off. And then have a brighter day tomorrow. There we go, man. <laughs> nah, you did more than you think. 
I think it's because that was the first time she was able to see the person that everybody was saying Rudy was. Because from her, from her perspective, she's always seen him as this guy that kind of appears like a good guy, but in actuality, you know, he's a terrible person. He punched her dad. He sent his goons out to collect from the girls, <laughs> from the girls' dorms. But I think that was the first moment where she was actually able to see the person that everybody said Rudy was. That specifically Rui Jared said Rudy was. Yeah. That would be so sick. That would be so fire, dude. Oh man, I hope that happens now. That would be so sick, dude! Alright, so that was the end of the episode, and my question of the day for you guys is going to be, what are you guys' thoughts, or I guess what you guys think was the reason why Norn was finally able to open up? What was your interpretation of that whole situation? Because I already told you guys mine, but I want to hear if any of you guys think differently, because, you know, it's always nice to share ideas and share theories. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And with that, I'm going to head out. Thank you all so much for watching this far into the video. And I will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one.